The Panorama of the Thames is a photography project aimed at documenting the river landscape of the River Thames on both banks over a stretch of 52 miles. John Ingalls and Jill Sanders have spent 15 years taking photographs and putting them together in a continuous and seamless panorama. John is a visual effects specialist who has worked on films like Superman with Christopher Reeves. He's sorted out the technical side of the project while Jill has concentrated on the historical detail. They came across a similar project which had been carried out in 1829. Publisher Samuel Lee put together a panorama using watercoloured etchings by a group of artists whose names are not known. When you look at the two together, you have a remarkable historical resource, illustrating the changes to the landscape over 185 years. We met at Chiswick Pier, where they told me how the project had come about. The project started in uh, the year 2000, when the Mayor of Richmond asked me if there was some way we could photograph uh, the buildings on the riverside in, to show them in the context of the riverside. Previously they were making decisions about uh, buildings uh, based on what it looked like from the road or a, a satellite pictures and so on. So I set about trying to find a way to do it and I remembered many years before I'd done a similar thing in backgrounds on visual effects in movies. So. I said, let's have a go, let's see what we can do. And we got funding and we did five or six reaches in Richmond, which we photographed every building. And that was the start of the project. Tell me, Jill, how did you find Samuel Lee's uh, original panorama from 1829? Well, we were doing our photography of the river at Isleworth actually, and uh, one of the people supplying information was the retired archivist at Hounslow. And she said, oh, what you're doing is very much like the Lee Panorama of 1829. And we said, well, what are you talking about? And so we discovered the 1829 Panorama, and we found some copies of it, all in very poor condition, because it opens out to 60 feet. It's one long work. And of course, it suffered over the many years and going out on the boats. And I think it was done between Richmond and Westminster because at the time the steamboats were using that route as one of the main tourist routes. Richmond was a tourist resort and so that's why the panorama was produced in 1829 to cover that length of river. Also, the various pages, I think there are 45 pages involved in the 60 feet, uh, they were coloured by different people at different times and they used different colours and we had to try and even it all out. But in, all, in all, it took two years to do um, the entire restoration. So you've been able to compare and contrast the original from 1829 and the modern pictures. You must have learnt quite a lot in the process about social change. It's absolutely fascinating. I, sh I, I should go on mastermind, really, about the river in 1829 through London, because it's just fascinating. But health and safety, I mean, the way people had to work, the, the, the health implications of working in gas works, the health implications of earning not enough to feed your family, uh, the filth, the dirt, the stench. We worry about pollution. I don't know, it was pretty bad then. Uh, this was central in, in London especially and the river was becoming polluted with cesspits putting the um, contents into the River Thames which hadn't happened before. So it, social change was immense. I mean this was the end of the Georgian era, end of the reign of George IV. So before Victorian times, before the great innovations of that era with the railways and the bridges and the embankments. So really it was a different planet and it was fascinating to look into it in some depth locally. I can imagine actually that Strand on the Green would look pretty similar and so might Chiswick Mall. but in between, I mean where we are now, Chiswick Pier used to be boatyards here didn't they? Well before that of course it was farmland, market gardens uh, and no building at all very much apart from some big estates but yes yeah, some places are remarkably unchanged which I put down to the local people looking after them like places like Strand on the Green people really fight to keep those places looking as they did and other places are completely unrecognisable uh, like Lambeth or centrally in London, Battersea so it's variable. So this is a database 
Yes, it's a serious conservation project, which you now see on the website, but will be conserved for, for the future. All the images will be there in high resolution. So the idea is it's the past and the present for the future.